Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. And today, the map I'm going to be exploring is RP Aneurysm V2. Now the reason I was interested in checking this out is because it's made by a creator that you might actually be familiar with if you've been following the channel for a while. This map is created by Didascus, who is also the creator of GM Liminal Space. Now, the other reason I was interested in coming here is not just because it shares a creator. In a lot of ways, from what I understand, it actually shares a map itself. This map is actually intended as a more apocalyptic, twisted reflection of GM Liminal Space. Now that's a really cool idea to me. Having a map that you might already be familiar with, and then remaking it in a different light. Now clearly it's not exactly the same, because this is a room that I don't recognize at all. In fact, when I spawned in here, I wasn't sure if I had downloaded the right map. But I guess I'll just have to wait and see. Now the original map, it featured all kinds of liminal spaces, and this surely is one as well. But it lacked this kind of horror ambiance. It didn't have the fires or the rubble, and certainly not the blood. This room kind of gives the impression of being like some kind of underground like sewage infrastructure, so it's always really cool to me when natural light is led into areas where it wouldn't normally be. And this tunnel entrance to nowhere. That almost looks like a trap, doesn't it? Well, let's get exploring, I guess. I can probably crouch under these pipes if need be, but... At first, I think I'm just going to take the path of least resistance. Hmm. It looks like the tunnel narrows considerably. And we've not stopped seeing bloodstains. I feel like I have to... This is really... I feel like this is much more effective in VR than it would be in standard mode, because I had to duck to get my head under that beam. And when I come down this hallway... Uh, claustrophobia works so well in VR, in my opinion. I experienced this with GM Catacombs as well, but I feel like I have to pull my shoulders closer together to get through here. Oh, it's so cramped. I have no idea where I'm going, and... I don't know if you'll even be able to hear it, but there's like a very... muted whirring noise. Like, just barely loud enough for me to be aware of it. I was actually speaking with the creator on the Discord, which you should totally join, link in the description, a little while back, and they were talking to me about doing the music. I think the sounds for it was GM Liminal Space at the time. Uh, this widens up considerably. And they basically spoke about engineering the sounds so that it's the kind of thing that you won't even notice when it changes. The kind of thing that is actually quite deafening, but you're only vaguely aware of. Like, you'd never focus on it. It's actually a very hard thing to describe, but maybe you'll know what I'm talking about. How in dreams, at least for me, often there'll be like some really dense, like, rushing water behind a wall type of noise that builds and builds with the tension, and it's, it's only when it's been going on for a long time that I finally register it, consciously. That's what the, that's what the sounds on these maps kind of feel like. It's very well done. Yeah, that lighting looks more natural.
Wait. Yes, I recognize this. This is a structure that I recognize from GM Liminal Space. This is the place that I described as looking like sort of a business center or almost like a train or bus station. Yes. Only this doesn't look destroyed at all. This actually is completely clear. Oddly enough, even though this version of the map is meant to be taking on a more hostile tone, these cool colors are actually leading me to feel more calm in this area than I did in the original. However, this is a notable difference. This before led to a hallway filled with desks and computers, but now we have a mystery door. Uh, but it seems like the layout is overall the same. The only thing that's really changed is the texturing of the walls. What was before was kind of tacky, ratty wallpaper it has now been replaced by crumbling, paint-peeling brick. And that texture change is enough to change the coating of the whole environment, to make it feel like it's taken on a completely different mood. By making it bare, it makes it feel like you're returning to somewhere, say, like, a place of work or a school or something, only to find it abandoned. It's actually crazy that, to me, having already played GM Liminal Space, What was that noise? That was like a hissing sound. Okay, well, no time to dwell on that. I was going to say, it's almost like having played the map prior, I have expectations for what each area should be. And in that way, it's kind of like having a recurring dream that's different each time. So, for example, uh, my family has a house out east, and it features in my dreams a lot. But the thing is, it's different every time. Like, sometimes it'll be mostly the same mood as it's like in real life. Others all come and find it abandoned and overgrown. Sometimes it'll be much larger or much smaller than it really is, and almost always with doors and rooms and add-ons that weren't there before. And yet... It's weird. It's like I'll recognize those differences as something that's always been there. That's something that's always struck me as so odd about dreams is that when I when I recognize something different, I'll think to myself like, oh, of course that's there. How, how could I have forgotten? Even though it's a, obviously a completely new idea that my brain just came up with on the spot, it's like it can generate a nostalgia for something that you're seeing for the first time. Yep, same room as we've seen before, just painted red now instead of yellow. Now if I remember correctly enough to navigate this space, we can get to that big main hall by coming down the corridor on the left which I believe would have been like a school corridor with lockers before. And that's the thing. It's like what I was saying a second ago. I know I have a very basic idea of how this place is laid out. Even though it's all different, I have an expectation because I've, in a way, been here before. Even though everything's different. Let's see if my little hideout room that I loved so much is still intact. Yep. It seems this place hasn't changed at all. Right down to the flopped over chair in front of the door. You hear that thump? That distant drum beat? That's the kind of thing that, whew, I guess these are all physics props. So I just kind of bumped into that and made the whole, the whole row shake. Anyway, I hear a drum beat like that in the distance, and 
It makes me real nervous. It kind of makes me feel like something's entered the map. But... Shouldn't this hallway continue forward and go forth onto that main area? See, that's the thing, is, like, in some ways, I know exactly what to expect, and in some ways, I don't. It's like walking down the stairs in the dark and coming up one short or thinking there's one more than there is. Huh. Okay, well, that tunnel is still back there. But I could swear this hallway extended farther before. I could be wrong about that, though. It's been some time since I last played. Uh, this room is here still. Notably, though, much cooler colors. Which is kind of strange. If you're going for a more hostile, more apocalyptic environment, I feel like using the, cold, the cooler colors actually feels more calming. Now I know I didn't actually see anything. I know I'm gonna check tape and there was nothing there. But I could have sworn that when I came in here, I saw an arm recede around that corner. Which is impossible because this isn't even a corner. The wall just ends here. You're losing it, man. You're losing it. I don't recognize this little area. See, it's, it, this is the kind of stuff you see in dreams. These random, purposeless little add-ons. I'll save that for a second from now. Now let's see how this place has changed. Hmm. You know, it's strange. It's like... The overall look of this room. I don't know if even any textures in here have been changed, and yet it just looks... It just looks more dead somehow. Like, the warmth has been toned down a bit, that's for sure. And these rooms off to the side, yes, you know what? These rooms off to the side... They all used to be stores. There would be, like, shelves and stuff through here. That was like the grocery store area. But now... Now there's just... Wow, this makes no sense. There's like, boilers over there, but... Large boulders in here. And look at how densely packed those fluorescent lights are. Yes! I could see this being a space from a dream. Now I'll, now I'll often have dreams of being in some kind of industrial area where there's all kinds of equipments and pipe blocking my path and I can't find a way through. But having it turn to boulders on this side of the room, now that is an interesting choice. It's almost like as you walk from one direction to the other, it's like your stream of consciousness shifts. But... You know, as I said in my uh, Dream Logic video, there is a common thought to unite these things. I feel like both of these things represent your mind just thinking of obstructions. So it takes place in this kind of metal warehouse type thing. Ah, uh, you know, I feel like this is actually a very different experience depending on which way you walk through this room. Are you going from boulders to industrial equipment, or industrial to boulders? That sounds like a totally insane rambling, and even I haven't totally pieced it together in my head yet, but it makes sense to me. I always believe that dreams are functioning as a stream of consciousness, but that there's always some connecting idea to hold those things together. So in this case, it's like being lost in some kind of industrial space, and after a while, all your brain cares about 
is that it's being held back from seeing through or being able to make your way through the room by obstructions. And after a while, it doesn't matter what those obstructions are, it'll just create something. Now, it might initially say factory and create all that machinery because it sees the metal walls in the fluorescent light. But after a while, you stop thinking about that. And this would be the Powers Brothers offices. Yeah, this place is definitely coded as an industrial space. Now, I'm not sure if I've ever actually explained this before. When I mention a place being, like, coded as something, it comes up a lot in liminal space uh, discussions. So basically, this room, even though you can't really pin this down as anything, you can't say, this is what this place does, this is what's produced here. You could never get that kind of information, but you see the metal walls, you see the lighting, you see the equipment, and you just think factory, industry. Okay, I don't remember this being a thing on liminal space, but every once in a while, it's hitting me with some very directional, very deliberate sounds that aren't just sound effects like you hear, like you hear, now that I think of it, that you hear growing around me right now. These are sounds that sound like something is in the space with me, like bottles clattering over or a hissing in my ear. And, you know, I'm pretty on edge because I came into this expecting another map explorer. If something's actually going to startle me, it's going to get me really good at this stage. Also, something interesting I've just realized. Uh, you can actually see these boiler things coming up through the ceiling. I don't believe you could actually see through these windows at all on GM Liminal Space. Huh. Now, that's really interesting because... It still has the shafts of light coming down, it's downplayed now. But I feel like having a different perception of an area is all about the subtle details. Like, I mentioned before that when I came in here, something just, like, even though it didn't look any different, it felt different in a way that doesn't just come down to the warmth of the colors. And I think I've got it. A. These walls. I think they might have all been that concrete before, but now they're like a rusted metal. In addition, I wonder if it doesn't have some kind of, like, psychological effect being able to actually see through these windows where before there'd just be an orange haze coming through them. Oh. This door is just bricked up. This is actually, this would have been the door to where we spawned in GM Liminal Space. We actually, the first time we experienced this room, we came out this way. I'll have to go back through here to get around. If this is anything like the map we know from before, I'm trying to figure out how I should go about tackling this map. You know what? I know what I want to see. I kind of feel like a kid at Disney World right now. I want to go on Dumbo first. No, 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 the Haunted Mansion. But I do know where I'm going. If the layout is the... Now this is interesting. This is interesting. Now, what we have here, this was the hallway of the hotel area. Oh, and I see this map includes the big addition. Along with something new. This was, this would have been the red carpet, and to my sides would have been the hotel rooms. And the walls have all been torn out, but look, we have these beams, these pillars along the walls, and in a way, it's almost like they represent where the doors or where the walls would be to those rooms. And so it's like it's it's like we're walking through the skeleton of what you would only know is here if you played GM Liminal Space. Yes, this I think this is what I was looking for. Oh my. Well, this certainly is GM Liminal Hotel, but it's changed since we last saw it. 
That looks like a guard tower. This almost looks like some kind of internment camp has been set up in the courtyard. Definitely doing a good job at making the environment feel that much more hostile. I can't see a way to get up here, but... Can we peer through this window? Oh, we can. We can actually probably get in this way. Uh, but before I go on, let me... Let me kind of give my thoughts on this. This is an excellent use of the liminal hotel environment. Because a big part of that map's liminal appeal is the fact that it, it's coded as an outdoor area with grass and walkways. And yet it's indoors. It's surrounded on all sides with a ceiling above. So it feels, if you were to not look up, you would think you were outdoors in some kind of park, and yet it's all in a building. I feel like this plays into that perception. By taking something that would only be outside, and placing it in an environment that also feels like outside, yet it's indoors. It's basically stacking that element. Alright, let's have another look. And you know, I must once again call attention to that soundtrack. I just noticed that it's playing. It's like, every time I feel my anxiety rising, I'll suddenly become aware that that music has been playing for some time now. It's actually incredible design. Like, you never notice it ramping it up, but you still somehow feel the effects. Yes, this interior looks like a prison. That stream of consciousness. You're out in the yard and you observe a prison yard or a prison tower or a prison guard tower. And then as you enter, now you're in a prison. And so in that sense, whatever element you most focus on in a dream is the one that that dream will build upon. Yes, this leads up into the tower. There's a ladder going down. Way down, that's a big drop. I really gotta give this map credit. It's not just a reskin of GM Liminal Space, there's actually a lot of new stuff going on here. Also, is that a door I spy in that darkened corner under the stairs? Now it's like a proper prison yard. And look at that, that completely pitch black sky. And the fact that when you turn around, you can't even see the building that you supposedly came from. This map, probably more than just about any other I've played, except for maybe places you've seen in your dreams, of course, has really got that stream of consciousness down. If I weren't commenting to keep myself sane and kind of contextualizing everything as I go, I imagine this actually might feel like having a dream. Yes. Yes. Oh, and now that I'm looking at it, if you go back in this direction, the, the hotel hallway kind of degrades also into a prison. And so it's almost like a circle. Hallway, hotel to prison. And you know, this is even more interesting knowing that this hallway was a hotel, goes out onto an actual hotel, and then loops back around to prison. It's like it feeds onto itself. Now that door was there before, but what have we got in here? Yeah, this is new.
<laughs> Looks like we're back in the sewer. You know, it actually is funny how it's day or night depending on what area you're in. It's the kind of transition you'd never notice in a dream. It's the kind of transition I barely noticed until just now. Oh, what is this? Uh, I'm not seeing any other way. I think I'm going to have to jump down into the water, but this is quite dark and murky water. <laughs> now, if I were having this dream, I'd be really anxious about arms or eel-like creatures coming out of these pipes to grab me. And I'd be so worried about it, I wouldn't notice the thing coming from beneath the water. Oh, it's getting quite dark. I'm quite cramped. This murky water and the sound of my footsteps is making me anxious. Luckily... Luckily, I can stop making noises if I just tilt the stick slowly enough. Yep. Come on. Come on. Yep. Away we go. Wow, there's so many different directions to go. This is such a huge expansion on this map. I might not even be able to see everything. That was a weird effect. Yeah, you see that beam that's, like, sticking out of the wall over there? Right now, it's pointing almost straight at me. And as I sidestepped... Before I figured out what was going on, it was like the object was just, like, expanding, almost like it was coming towards me. More of these... prison cell-like objects. There sure are a lot of these on this map. And it's almost like a recurring theme at this point. And this one just has no window. Sometimes there's nothing to describe. Sometimes you just have to let a scene speak for itself. It is kind of cool, though, the way this cylindrical object is in the middle of the room, but the way it sits in the middle of this water feature, and the way the one light shaft comes down onto just one face, it's kind of coded both as like an ancient temple and some kind of sewage infrastructure at the same time. Let's see what's over here. Presented with three choices. Nothing here. Nothing here. And nothing here. Coming down all this way and finding three doors, each with an identical nothing room behind them. It makes it feel like those dreams where you just can't figure out where you're supposed to be going. Now that we're back in vaguely familiar territory, I believe on the right 
is where we once found all our water features. Although, to be honest, I'm kind of sick of water by now. Huh. Now, interestingly enough, it seems like this area has opted to go for warmer lighting in contrast to the cool lighting that was here previously. It's like it's been inverted in each area. <laughs> also, that's making me really uncomfortable. The carpet leading up to tile in the water. Now this, even though the shape is basically the same, I don't know what it is that makes this feel so much more claustrophobic before. I feel like this environment used to be less linear. Like, I think maybe there was an entrance to another room right there? But it's one of those things where it's like, I'm returning to a space that is familiar, but not. And it probably helps that there's a few months of separation between... between now and the last time I was here. And so in that way, it makes it feel like I can't be sure what's different and what I'm just remembering wrong. For example, I don't think those little cubby holes were there before. Ugh. This hallway, however, definitely was. I remember speaking before about how these chairs all lined up like this make me feel like I'm walking through some kind of waiting room. And what they're all waiting for, who knows. Now this is an interesting take on the same thing. It's got that same waiting room vibe, and yet... The place is all crumbling and destroyed on fire, even. So it's like, what could you possibly be waiting for? I think, between the choice of that door and these stairs, I think I'm gonna take the stairs first. I just got startled by the shape of that rounding the corner. I am so on edge that, like... I'm telling you, if this map were to pull a scare on me, I would absolutely die of a heart attack just on the spot. You know what? I think this is, uh... Yes, I think this is... On the other side of this wall would connect to that main area with the skylights. I think that's what this is. I think this is the room that I spawned in the first time around. Here's another one of those samey mazes that makes it feel like you know what you're trying to get to, but you just can't find your way to it. whole lot of these weird counter windows on this map. I don't think there were any of these in the original version, but they're all over the place here. That door's open. Have I been through here before? Have I been through here before? It doesn't seem familiar, but that door is open. And I've yet to find another open door anywhere. Well, that's gonna bother me tremendously. I don't like that at all. <laughs> oh, I don't recognize any of this. I thought I was so close to civilization, but I've... 
The civilization in this case meaning where I know. Uh, but thankfully, we're back here. I say thankfully. I gotta go back in and check every possible area. I'm starting to freak out, really. Now I believe I remember this. Yeah, these are the bathrooms. I'm not even gonna bother cracking every stall. Yes, and you know what? I think this is the hallway. Uh, I don't like taking these corners when they're so frequent. Yes, this was the abandoned hallway leading from, if my memory serves, the abandoned deli or convenience store. This, however, is brand new. It's like the courtyard of some kind of old school. And you know, at this point, having been navigating those twisting hallways with only fire to light them for so long, stepping out into this courtyard kind of feels like when you walk out of a movie theater and are shocked to find that it's still day after being in the dark for so long. Avoid the low-hanging lights. Yes, this place. This place is as I remember it for the most part, only now. It's much more bare, and... Both doors are completely bricked up. This is the only way to get here now. Well, you're obviously coming with me. Given how ominous this is, I just... Okay, let me explain what just happened. Let me explain the very horrible thing that just happened to me. So, I heard what sounded like a thump behind me. And I lifted my headset to see if something had maybe, like, fallen off the bed or something. And I wasn't facing the way I thought I was. I was actually facing my closet, which was slid open. I don't think it was like that before. But moving on, nothing to be done about it now. I'll just have to have that in the back of my mind while I'm wearing this device that obstructs my vision and partially deafens me to the sounds of the outside world. Who would be bothered by that? What's down this way? I'm in a hurry to end this now. Another one of these? Good enough for me. There's the prison yard where we came out of before. Always remember to look up on these maps. That applies to real exploring as well. Always remember to look up. There's so many cool sites that you'll miss if you don't. Oh, I thought this was something new, but this little area is actually there on the original map. Kind of strange, though, that to have this cool, foggy lighting. Almost looks like a graveyard at night. Ah, uh, here's the parking garage. Now, this map is present on GM Liminal Space as of the patch, but here it's located somewhere completely different because the hotel maze very conspicuously isn't here now. It's like we've just skipped all the way to the end. And here is where we loop back in on the area with the pipes. Yeah, there's where we came from. And you know, I think it's only right that we deliver this guy 
to the place where we started kind of feels like a conclusion, you know? I think right here will be appropriate. There you go. Kind of crazy how coming back into a familiar place actually completely throws off the mental map that I thought that I had of this map. Huh. I see the floor is lava. When you make it seem like someone went to such effort to build a bridge here, it makes it feel like that water is not what it seems. And what it seems, to be honest, right now is actually extremely deep. Like, if you were to assume that the shape is perfectly symmetrical, the water would actually be not that deep. But from the looks of it, it's not symmetrical. And so it fools you at a glance into thinking that the water is more shallow than it is. And we're back in my favorite tunnels. I was getting ready to end the video, but then I remembered I actually forgot to take the ladder inside the prison. I'd forgotten all about this. Right, down we go. Uh, I mean... Oh wait, no! I went to... Uh, I, I went to mime climbing down so it would be more immersive and... I actually ended up climbing back up. I think it has to do with the way that I'm facing. Huh. It's like an older prison underneath the prison. It kind of reminds me, actually, of the prison in Silent Hill 2. How the deeper you got, the more degraded and nightmarish it became. Seems so far, though, like it is just a bunch of empty rooms. Although, with all the empty rooms I've seen, this is actually an intriguing thought. Remember, GM Liminal Space was GM Liminal Space, but this is RP aneurysm. So you could set up a role-playing space on here. I really wonder, and I know I say this for every RP map I explore, I would really like to see gameplay of people playing on this map. I wonder what it would look like, because it doesn't take the form of any conventional structures that you would see. Most RP maps will have things like a police station, a city hall, a courtroom. But this isn't like that, so what kinds of things would you even get up to on a map like this? Now one last thing I'm wondering... Is does the easter egg apply to this map as well? Now, I have recorded, but as of this moment, not yet posted, me returning to GM Liminal Space to access an easter egg that you guys have been telling me since October is located behind the windows of the computer room. But I'm wondering, does it exist in this version of the map as well? Come on. Thank you. Oh, it does! It does, it does, it does, it does! And I see the flashlight is similarly useless when the walls, floor, and ceiling are all textured black. Hello? Oh. Huh, I guess this one doesn't work on this. Well... Time for the no-clip run. Hello? Maybe this map does have the hotel after all. What is all this? Okay, uh, where do I come in? I 
I don't know what to think about this. How would you access this area? Just a bunch of completely empty rooms. Just floating off in the void outside the map? What is this all about? <laughs> this is the kind of thing that, were you to discover it in a regular game, would inspire all kinds of creepypastas. And it's got this weird quality to it where it doesn't actually feel endless. It always feels like you're just about at the end, and yet every time you round a corner, there's a whole bunch more ways to go. See? See what I mean? This area is conspicuously darker than the others. What is the deal with this area, and is there any way to actually access it? Huh, that is so interesting. Are we still not done? See, I assumed this to be a skybox, but now I'm thinking, where would we even see this? This is not just a skybox. H how does one access these areas? Uh, that looks like Cyrillic. I can't really read it. But this almost looks like some kind of destroyed... It, it almost looks sort of like a train station or something. Or a post office. doesn't even feel like the same map. I mean, aside from a couple of fires here and there, and the overall desertion, it almost feels like a normal cityscape. Well, except for the fact that the buildings that have the fires in them are totally out of place in this environment. Little concrete huts amid a sea of modern buildings. I am so baffled... N not just by the look of the area, right? But of why the creator would choose to include something like this. Same goes for that maze we just came from. Like, why is it here, and is there any way to go about accessing it from the map without the use of Noclip? Can we enter this tunnel? It doesn't seem so. Oh. There it is. Those buildings are completely destroyed. Kind of interesting that this place had me fooled into thinking it was a completely normal city, and I actually had to hunt to find the evidence of destruction. Not openable. I imagine I'll get a similar result with each of these doors. Or will I? That's the thing. Is there a sea of locked doors and just one that opens onto some secret? Being able to turn these handles on a number of doors that are seemingly useless, that's... That's conspiracy fuel. Ah. Uh, now I'm starting to see the dreamlike vibe. Roads that start and stop with no rhyme or reason. And a playground just in the middle of nowhere. Why does this seem to be such a common feature of dreams? Playgrounds where playgrounds shouldn't be. I once had a dream I was a little kid playing on a playground that was in back of a church and right next to a graveyard. And... I, I swear this is true. A couple years later, I'm browsing liminal space images, and I see a picture that is just point for point the space from that dream. I was completely taken aback.
I mean, it was exact. Right down to the design and layout of the playground equipment and the look of the church and just how close the gravestones were to that playground. I found it. I found it. I knew there would be one. I knew. I knew these doors wouldn't all have handles if at least one of them wasn't going to open. Well, I found how to access this area. But I very notably did not find out how to access the city. And more importantly, in my predicament, I didn't find out how to leave this area. Could definitely do with some pointers now. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you'd like me to make, the best place to do that is at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to give this map a try for yourself, as well as its variants, I will also link those in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next video.